Coming to you straight from the Rio Grande and beyond. And beyond. Broadcasting to the four corners of the globe. So grab your seat, your coffee, or your sundowner. Okay, everybody, here we go. On point, as always. This is Gloves Off. Gloves Off. We're back at you in Gloves Off. I'm Professor Buitron. I'm here with a great friend, uh, Guru Dennis Surveys from uh, Stockton area. And we're touching base on one thing, and that's called Serada Esprima. And um, a little bit about uh, Guru Surveys is that he's a second generation Angel Kabbalist Esprima practitioner. He's been studying with Grandmaster Vincent Kabbalas, dear brother of mine. And um, we're going to touch base on exactly how is uh, Serada different from all the other martial arts. How are we doing? We're doing good? Yeah, finally. Yeah, it's, it's doing good. I'm not and, used uh, to this. I understand. I understand everything with COVID. Every, you know, things change a little bit and uh, we just have to adapt. And now Zoom seems to be the best way possible. But at least we're getting things done. At least we're moving forward. Tell me a little bit. Um, have you all been over there? Been good? Uh, uh, I haven't been to the academy for a, a few years. I uh, I just visit now, but uh, I s trained for twenty five years or so with the uh, grandmaster. And uh, how did you get how did you get started with with Serada? What happened? Uh, and, and I know that. We'll touch base on the background of Stockton, but how did you get involved? Uh, well, it goes way back. I had a, a friend that was Filipino, and uh, him and me, we were best friends, and uh, I wanted to learn Aikido. <laughs> but there was uh, no place to learn Aikido. I thought I wanted to learn Aikido. And uh, I studied taekwondo instead i'd already learned a little bit of boxing uh we we would spar and you know box when i was in the seventh grade so i'd gotten a lot of altercations with people and because i had done boxing uh they didn't have much chance really against the, you know, some of the things I would do. And uh, I always wanted to be better than what I was. Anyway, uh, my Filipino friend, his dad uh, was in the Navy and he volunteered to teach us some Filipino martial arts. And I'm like, no, I'm gonna learn, uh, Aikido, and instead I learned the uh, Taekwondo, and I continued with Taekwondo, and uh, I also wrestled a little bit in high school, and I got in a lot of street fights, uh, you know, people, people thought they were better than what they were, whatever. And uh, they'd find out they weren't as good as they thought they were. Right. You know, that usually happens with many. Many people join the martial arts either because they were bullied as kids and they were stuck in the martial art. Or they were always getting into fights and wanted to become better. But in martial arts, changes them throughout. And I'm, I'm going across the spectrum, the different stories of the different masters and grandmasters of throughout, you know. And, and you see them change the persona and everything else as, as, as you grow better. But what drove you to Serrada? How'd you end up at the school? Uh, uh, well, uh, I, had, I, I had a black belt in Taekwondo and I had gotten into modern Arnis uh, with Bruce Jetnick and uh, he had trained with Angel and Dentoy Revelar. And uh, 
I met this other instructor. Uh, he, he did uh, what later became known as IKF, International Kickboxing Federation, Brooks Mason. Uh, he, he had me teaching the Filipino martial arts in his school. And I told him that uh, I needed to get better. And he said, well, go down to Stockton and find out which is the best, and I want you to train with them. And uh, so I went down there and I saw this seminar. It was at the Spano Center at the UOP uh, College there. And I watched, and there was this one kid, he's about 18, uh, he was dominating. Uh, you could tell he was way better than everybody else. So I thought, well, I'm going to find out who his instructor is. Th that Well, the guy that was fighting was uh, Vincent Cavallis Jr. And he, he told me, well, that would be my dad. Vincent Sr. is my instructor. So I went over and talked to him, and that was in October of 92. The, the same day at that seminar, his uh, younger sister, she was only 14 years old. She was, uh, she was doing pretty good against a 27-year-old man. He couldn't hit her, standing right in front of her. She's only 5'2", and I didn't know that was his little sister, you know. And uh, anyway, one day she showed up at the school, and I said, hey, there's that girl that was fighting the grown man in one, I think. <laughs> anyway, uh, I was watching that fight real closely, and I couldn't tell what she was doing. But it was techniques that I already knew, and she did them so so well that uh, the guy wasn't hitting her. You know, I got when I saw everybody because I've you know been over there, and, and I respect everybody that comes out of Stockton, and because you know they they're there for it really the mecca of what. Escrima, the Filipino martial arts, I would say it's Stockton, California. And I've coming to it, I, I met uh, uh, Guru Carlito and, and Ron when I was teaching at a seminar in Reno. And we became very good friends from there. And everybody in Stockton, and, you know, embraced me as, as one of their own, as a brother, you know. And that was very great with the fellowship because it t tells a lot of the school that they come from. And that school that is very family oriented, very much, we protect one another. You're, you're with us because you're, you're one of us, you know, kind of thing. And that, that's the way a martial arts school should be. You know, I came from that, that type of uh, environment with Savat and I came, you know, with the clubs over there in France, you became brothers, you were brothers until now. And uh, just to see the rich history of the martial arts is how, how it's happened, especially in Stockton. It's, 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 it's a real treasure, you know, to have met everybody, you and everybody that's there. And I appreciate that very much. And, uh, and I always like to hear the stories because those are the stories that continue resonating down the generation. Um, what else would you say from the history of, of Stockton that you've been involved with, everybody's kind of come together a little bit more. You know, most of the first generations, they all know each other. Everybody knows each other, basically. There's no way you can say that you're something that you're not. You're going to be tested. Uh, how can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, we, uh, we see each other, uh, you know, uh, you know, the different schools or whatever, they stop by and visit. When, when they're there though, uh, a lot of times we try to downplay, uh, we don't show up 
any fancy moves, you know, or <clears throat> very seldom, we just stick to basics uh, most of the time. That's what's going to uh, help, you know, in a real situation, it's the basics that you got to count on. Correct. Correct. What do you think? What makes Serrada different? Than, than the other Escrimas in your, in your viewpoint, in your opinion? It's, uh, well, it's, it's a science. Uh, it was invented a long time ago and uh, people think that it's going to uh, improve over time. The only way that would do, would happen is if people grew extra arms or something. It's designed for a human being. And uh, the secret is just to practice. Yeah, correct. You know, that's just like everything else. You know, you do the basics over and over and over and, and you just get better at them and you just get so much more proficient at it. If there's That's the only secret is for you not to quit for you to continue moving forward. And that I think that's a, the secret in any pugilistic art. You know, you just don't quit. The more you train, the better you get. Right. Right. Um Vincent was taught by his dad, the, the originator of the art. But uh, in all reality, the art existed before Angel was ever born. Uh, he just uh, put together, you know, he put together a system and uh, a curriculum for the public but he taught his sons, uh, John and Vincent, he taught them different. He could spend more time with them. So they had, they had a lot more techniques. Like, uh, for instance, a lot of people that trained with Angel, they have maybe 10 techniques for angle one maybe more than that. And uh, I have 36 just, uh, basics for number one. And those are just basics. There could be even more than that. Right. So, so Vincent learned a more detailed uh, and elaborate system of Serata than anybody else. And he's teaching the way he was taught. So it's a little, he's uh, deviated uh, from the curriculum that everybody else got to uh, how he was taught. Understood, understood. And is the school still alive? Oh yeah. The academy shut down since COVID. Actually, before COVID, it moved to the Grand Master's house. Uh, and COVID has, you know, impeded uh, a lot of things. Absolutely. Uh, uh, COVID has destroyed a lot of martial arts. And martial arts were iconic martial arts, you know. Um, in certain areas, martial arts that were not there just two, three years. that have been there. 20, 30, 40 years, and all of a sudden they're not there anymore. It just finished it off, you know, and uh, it's, un it's, it's unfortunate. You know, everybody tried to go into a teach, on teach online. You know, I'm a hands-on instructor. You, you have to feel to do it. Yes, you can do it by, by videos and such, but it's kind of hard. You know, we, we're starting off something on uh, – it folks are interested, you know, um, and the, the best platform I could see and use, it's something called uh, Buy Me a Coffee at We Throne Academy. So if people want to go take a look at that, 
we're going to be putting out a lot of uh, content, trying to reach more people in a different way, kind of keep them not from forgetting more than anything. And I think that's what we need to, we need to start doing. But, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff that I that I've been taught by by Carlito and Vincent and everybody there that 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 sticks with me. That and I'm very great grateful for that. But how would you? Here's the next question that everybody always asks: Guru, how, how would you say the differences are between the three the, the distinct original styles of stock? Talk about that a little bit. Oh, the different. The different Filipino systems. Uh -huh. uh, well, the Remy Prasis system is a uh, he he trained in all he trained in like uh, Espadiadaga type stuff from his grandfather, and he also has black belts and other arts like jujitsu and. Uh, I don't know what all, but he studied a lot of other things. So he learned like, uh, he learned more than just martial arts by studying the other martial arts. He learned uh, like their ranking or their uh, belief systems, whatever. Right. So, Anyway, he he tried to, I think he did a pretty good job of putting together a system and called it modern Arnis. He studied, he traveled to a lot of different islands to see what they had. And if he saw something he liked or they'd let him have a technique, he'd incorporate that. And he, he'd compete, you know? Right. And then they, there's the Dose Pares. Uh, that's probably the most, you know, they they had higher standards than a lot of people. That was 12 systems uh, uniting together to bring all of their stuff together to, uh, to make a, a system where they could have tournaments and things. Right, and we and and uh, we lost a great grandmaster just recently, which was uh, which was Alfredo Bandalan, and you know our prayers go out to his family and his friends and the Doce Pares crew, you know, because uh, he was a great individual, great friend too. Yeah, that was too bad. You know, I understand the change of the guard has to happen and all that happens. To, uh, it has to happen, has to occur in its life, right? How right. would you say, has things really changed as screaming the last, say, since you started to, say, the last couple of years? Well, for me, I got better. But uh, in Stockton is a little unique. It has like a hundred people that wa that want to be instructors, and they're pretty qualified, or they think they are. Uh, but they're competing with each other. Being in Stockton, they need to go someplace else. And uh, like a lot of times, they'll only have fourteen students or less. Right. You see, that's what happens in a place. If you start getting a lot of martial arts schools in one area, different styles, doesn't matter. And all of a sudden you start putting them, you put them together. Uh, people are going to start either traveling from martial arts school to martial arts school, which is okay. Uh, you really won't get a serious person. You just get a lot of people doing a bunch of different stuff. And then you're going to get some few serious players. Um, when that happens, what occurs is the quality of the martial arts actually diminishes. So, you know, I tell people this now, it's, you know, I'm no longer, I don't, I don't, I've never cared about actually producing a silver, a silver glove, 
you're going to get, you're going to become a silver glove of somebody. You're going to grow up the, the ranks. If you stick long enough and you continue being dedicated, you're going to grow, you're going to do that. My main importance was I always wanted to create good citizens of society and community. People, people that were capable of defending themselves and taking care of themselves when need be. And I think that's what happened with Angel Cabalas. Grandmaster Cabalas taught a lot of people the art for them to become good citizens in society, which they are, but taught them how to defend themselves. And as time progressed, of course, it became teachers. Yeah, I think people, if they if they know they can defend themselves, they're not going to cow tell to uh, nonsense. Right. Right. So what would you say when somebody wants to come in and start training into a screamer? What would you tell them? The first things you'll tell them. Contact the grandmaster or me. If somebody wanted to get in touch touch with you and with uh, can you give out those numbers in case people are listening and wanted to go that route? Uh, well, maybe your email. Yeah, my email is uh, Dennis Service uh, seven at uh, gmail dot com. There you go, folks. Um, one of the uh, second generation gurus of Sarada Screma, very talented, great individual, and uh, we'll be seeing you all soon. And anything else for the for the community out there? Uh, there, are, oh, there's not any uh, books that I would recommend, or even videos, really. Uh, they don't give some of it. Some of it uh, really is a, is bad. It gives people a bad idea. And uh, I guess there's some that I just haven't seen. Uh, I don't I don't waste my time looking at some videos, but uh, I would like to see the Grand Master's book finally come out. He, he gets started and then he stops and doesn't work on it for a while. But there's gonna be some interesting stuff in that. Uh, I don't know if he's gonna put techniques in there or not. I, I hope he makes it a, a comprehensive uh, book. A lot of people a lot of people have wanted to do books on Serata that, that have studied it. And uh, I, don't, I don't think uh, they should be doing that without authorization from the Grand Master, really. It's his responsibility to maintain the standards. You know, I, I, I agree with you in, 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 in points. Everybody needs to do a book if they studied extensively over it because everybody's a piece of that puzzle and vincent uh grandmaster cabalas needs to push forward and finish his book you know and and uh, i'll i'll touch base with him and we will have him on 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 the podcast in the near future and we'll touch base on exactly what's going on and some other issues that that you know especially on on publishing a book you know and i've done some i've written 14 um some of the some of the first ones that we did most of those manuals you know when nobody knows it i'm not a publisher i'm not an author and we go through some some learning curves and some of those books have been lost because the publishers all of a sudden closed shop and left you know and you're like they took everything with you so there's a lot of stuff out there um and it, uh, what we'll say guru is we're running out of time it's a pleasure seeing you again. We'll, we will get, we'll, we'll, hopefully we'll get together soon uh, over there or here or what have you, but we'll get together soon. It's always a great, great time when we go down there and, and, and exchange knowledge. It's, it's, it's awesome. I want to thank you all. 
and folks uh, out there, there's way too many martial arts out there. Pick and choose. Ask for references. If you want to uh, learn Sarada, uh, contact uh, Guru Surveys or contact me. Depending on where you're at, we'll, we'll kind of put you into a good uh, person that's teaching. You know, there's there's everybody that came out of uh, of Grandmaster Kabbalist is an excellent teacher. And uh, you know, if you want to learn a screamer, give us give us a call. We'll we'll guide you which one way or another. Or if you just want to learn martial arts, also give us a call because we might have an associate or a dear friend in that area that that can teach you all. A lot of people just go out there and just get uh, hypnotized, but a lot of these MacDojos that are teaching on the street corners that and that's not the way it should be done. So you'll well, be careful I, when you're doing. Talking- wait a minute before we go. I got to tell you something. This is funny. I went to Stockton, went to a restaurant, and uh, anyway, uh, I'd always liked this particular restaurant, but I don't know, maybe it's because of COVID or whatever, that uh, their uh, their uh, attitude and everything had dropped, and the uh, menus had smudged, uh, they weren't clean, the menus, you know, People touched those menus, and uh, they, they were like grimy, you know. And my grandson was with me. He said, Grandpa, I'd rather go hungry than eat here. Look at this. And he, he has better eyesight than I do. So I, I was like, yeah, okay, well, uh, maybe we ought, to, we ought to go if you don't want to eat here. And anyway, the waitress, she's trying to be polite. She says, well, don't you want the bread? You know, they have this bread there. And my grandson, he says, no, I don't want anything from this place. I just want to (laughs) leave. And so uh, she's trying to uh, talk us into staying. And we're, we're, we're going, we're gone. And, uh, some homeless guy uh, running around Stockton. He ha- he c- carries a, 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 a crowbar. He has this crowbar. He thinks he's a, a, a scrimidor. And he comes running at my grandson with his crowbar. And, uh, but my grandson had already got in the car. So I say, uh, I, I don't, well, I don't say anything. I just go to leave and he runs around to my side of the car. So I opened the door, which was a mistake, but he crammed me into the open door there. I guess he was planning on hitting me with the crowbar. And uh, I didn't want to go to jail for uh, something. I, uh, he had the crowbar in his right hand. I karate chopped him in the side of his neck on the left side of his neck. I thought maybe that'll do something. Well, the crowbar dropped to the, uh, you know, dropped out of his hand when I hit him, I guess. And uh, it fell to the ground and he used his feet. He kicked the crowbar back so I wouldn't get it kicked it behind him and he ran off, got his crowbar and left. And uh, anyway, I reached right in the car and pulled out an equalizer. And I said, where are you going? And that was it, you know? And uh, anyway, my grandson, he was wanting to get into it. And I said, no, let's go. So we drove away. You know, so, and uh, things happen. The world's get, getting funnier by the minute. Crazy, getting, yeah. That guy, he's, he's about 30 in his prime. I'm 67. I'm in my prime, too. So uh, I figure, you know, I'll, I'll probably live 120 years. So that puts me about midway through there. 
<laughs> I don't know. Yeah, well, you know, keep keep safe, you know, keep safe and keep training and uh and it's good that nothing else happened, you know, and uh that's a funny story. There there's a dozen others just as funny. Uh Serato works couldn't... so good though, you know. That is funny. But let's do this, Guru. I want to wish you the best. Uh, it's always not great to see you. We're going to go ahead and, and, and close this, this, this episode off and give a huge hug to everybody in the, in the crew out there. All right? Yeah. Time. Much peace. <laughs> Thank you.